I'm tired. And I've just found out that I'm flying at half six in the morning from Stansted, not Luton. Luton's all right, but Stansted. Which I thought, because it was my own mess up, I thought we were going on Saturday. We are going to Germany for what is the third year anniversary of Pegida, which is a mass organisation which demonstrates about the Islamisation of Germany. We're going tomorrow. I need to get my hair cut. I've got so much stuff to do. Let me start off with the um, flicking through before I went into the papers, just flicking through my local, local news. Man slashed with knife in outrageous loot and road rage attack. Okay. Now this would have been three white men slashing a Pakistani Muslim, then this would be described in a very different way. But let's go through. A gang slashed a Luton driver with a knife after he signalled at them for driving dangerously. And the reason why this springs to my attention is because there was a man called Mark Sharp in Luton who a car was driving erratically like this and he went like that. Now after that they rang their friends, they followed him and in front of his son when he was going to get a takeaway, they beat him with baseball bat sticks, poles, more of them come, two cars of them, full of them come. They got out with weapons that he would not go down and they snapped the knife off in his head in front of his son whilst he was going to get a takeaway. The victim was in his car, the traffic lights at the junction of Denby Road and Bishopsgrove Road. For any of you who don't know, that is the Sharia zone within Luton. Another car, a silver vehicle, which may have been a Hyundai, overtook them. He thought they were drive their driving was dangerous and as a result he flashed his lights and made a gesture towards their car. The silver car then stopped, three occupants got out. Of course, never one, three. Always multiple numbers, never one. They approached the victim's car, they assaulted him, and they slashed him with a knife. Seems like a fair response to calling them a, giving them a sign. The offenders are described as Asian. Asian. I'll save your job there on your reddit, yeah? I don't know why we edit that out. I really don't know why we edit out. Uh, his story, this geezer's trying to get off with the acid throw thing, you know? The girl out of, what's her name, Fern. And um, a fella's thrown acid in some lads in the club. And he's trying to say he saw these men and he saw them with a little bottle of liquid, so he thought they were spiking a girl's drink. So he was the hero who came to save the day, took the, took the liquid off them and he wanted to show that it was empty. <laughs> That's what he's saying. That's how he's trying to get off of it in court. That's how he's trying to get off of it in court. Oh, I'll give Rooney a break every day. Every day. Billionaire, media mogul, Michael Bloomberg blasted Brexit as the stupid, stupidest thing any country has ever done. He's the head of a billionaire media outlet and here he is saying the most stupid thing any country's ever done in history is vote for Brexit. Is that not something that's a completely retarded thing to say? That is the most moronic thing I've heard someone say. Think about what previous world leaders have done from previous countries. All the war, all the chaos, all the murder, all the bloodshed. Everything that's happened. And he thinks the most worst thing's done is Brexit. Not the famine, not, not starving people to death, not anything Saddam Hussein done, not anything any of these tyrants done, not anything that Hitler done. You know, voting for Brexit was the worst thing any country's ever done in history. So says some absolute muppet. We've got some... Stupid story here. I know there's already going to be coming up. Hold on. Oh yeah, what's going on at our universities? You saw this say there was an MP who questioned what they're teaching about Brexit at universities, and there was this big uproar about it. And the reason he was asking, because what it turns out is eight in ten academics voted to stay. The reason why that is, which eight out of ten academics and professors in universities are left wing. Yeah. It turns out that within the universities, our remaining universities. All the professors, they've made it such a hostile environment for anyone who voted for Brexit to even admit voting for Brexit. Now, many of these people, many of these MPs, many of these professors, you're there to teach. Say, for example, this one man, he's teaching engineering. He's teaching engineering, but he's handing out, he's handing out all of these, all this, all this literature was given 100% remain stop Brexit posters out. That's not your job. Your job in that university is to teach. Not to promote your politics. And it's sh when you go through all of these, you find out that the EU give a billion pound a year to the universities, which is where it's all stemming down from, which is why they're all becoming such, we have such group thinking in our universities, everyone thinking the same. And if you think any differently, you have to remain quiet and be quiet because you'll be intimidated, bullied, or even attacked by some of these left-wing fascists. Now this, this, this 
you know what she says from this? Re from this, look at it, yeah? From this story here, she says that the newspapers are trying to start a race war. That's what she says today, from this story. She, uh, she makes everything about race, everything about colour. She says that black people have to work harder at university, at Cambridge. She, her whole life is revolved and pus pushing herself up on a pedestal around her being black, but yet she's focusing everything. It just infuriates me. Feminist killjoy behind the campaign. And she's saying by putting her picture up, let me get what she said. She said that they're trying to start a race war. She's unha always unhappy, always a victim. Accused her, and then she, what she said is, it's disgusting that some of these rich middle class students, they want, they, you know like in their little gap bit from university, they go and help in Africa. Oh, that's infuriated her. How dare they? How dare they? These middle class white people were moved to travel abroad through inherent selfishness. That's what she says. <laughs> ah! When did she last go to Africa? I know, probably never been. <laughs> she probably never been. In a column on Dr. Starsky, she claimed that black people work harder at Cambridge than white people. That there is a racist comment. That there is racist. She is racist. She is a racist turning everything about race while trying to portray that Cambridge University and everything else about it is racist. When it's clearly not. She's like a female Monroe Bodo. Monroe Burdoff is female. Just you, you transphobic. Um, anyway, look. I hope she fails her degree. Right, I'm going to get my hair cut. We're going to Dresden. We're going to Germany and you're coming with us. If you're watching this on Tommy Robinson's show, you'll be there every part of the way. You'll be on the plane with us. You'll be off the plane with us. You'll be meeting Lutz Backman with us when we land at the other airport. You'll probably be coming swimming with us, because look at this, this is quite funny. I messaged uh, Lutz must think. So he's, me he's messaged me and I've messaged him saying, because he's picking us up from the airport when we land. We're landing in Prague, we're going to Prague first. And I messaged him, all right mate, can we go, can we go swimming first? <laughs> he, must, he must think, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're coming out here to give a talk at our, our event, but you want to go swimming and yes yeah, right because if you've been to prague prague has the best the best indoor swimming complex going it's got two of them so whenever i go there i like to fit it in and uh so oh, tommy that's going to be uh, quite difficult for me because as you can imagine there's uh, millions of things to do for the birthday celebration so i'm just going to come and fetch you and bring you to Dresden, and we're going to have some lunch and then i have a lot of things to do but there's a nice uh, swimming complex in Dresden as well i can uh, drop you there <laughs> he must think what are you on what are you on about mate your swimming pool but anyway, we're going to Dresden, we're going to Prague, then we're going to Dresden. You'll be there with us, you'll be watching our speeches. The video you're about to watch tonight of Martin Selner from Generation Identitaire, who we met yesterday, we'll be meeting him and we'll be showing you the biggest anti-Islam rally in Europe in a while.